Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, back to do some more work on the 392. As you can see, I've got it up in the air on the lift. Still got the fenders off. I'm still waiting on the uh, the graphics. Um, so I've got it all prepped and ready for that. So uh, while I am waiting for that and I've got the fenders off and good access, I figured I would install my lift kit on this. Um, now we did install uh, 37 inch BF Goodrich uh, KM3s on this. Uh, they do clear. Uh, we use the factory wheels. Um, if we have a full load in the back, we do get some slight rubbing. Um, you know, when we go over bumps or around corners. And you can see right here is where it rubs. I uh, think that's the only spot that I've noticed. And it's on the rear. It's very slight. Um, but we are going to be taking this thing to Moab for Easter Jeep Safari. And so uh, we definitely, you know, expect that it will rub more on uh, articulation. So what I've got is I've got the Terraflex JL one and a half inch spacer lift, uh, the control arm relocation brackets, the bump stops, and the uh, uh, support brackets for the drop brackets. So... Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on getting this installed and uh, give the Jeep just a little bit more height. So to get started, we need to disconnect the sway bars. Uh, we need to disconnect the brake lines uh, from the frame, I believe. We need to disconnect this brake line bracket from the lower control arm, and they say to discard that. We need to loosen up the upper and lower control arms. Um, and disconnect the sway bar, or I'm sorry, not the sway bar, the, uh, we do need to disconnect the sway bar, but we need to disconnect the track bar. Um, and then last thing is we'll disconnect the shocks at the bottom of the axle. Uh, and then that will allow us to go ahead and lower that axle down, get the springs out, put our spacers in, new bump stops, uh, the progressive bump stops, and then we can start going back with reassembly on that. So I think I got everything disconnected. I've got the sway bars disconnected. I've got all the uh, control arms loose. I've got the uh, brake lines disconnected uh, from the control arms and the frame. Uh, I've got the uh, actuator for the e-locker disconnected. Shocks are disconnected, axle supported. Uh, the only thing that I didn't do that the uh, instructions say to do is to disconnect the track bar. Uh, at the axle, uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, it's it's not that big of a lift. I don't think uh, it's going to be a big deal to be able to get enough droop out of this thing uh, to get the spacers in. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, raise the Jeep up, uh, get the pressure off of these springs. Uh, we'll get those pulled out and then we'll get uh, putting the uh, spacer blocks and the new bump stops in. We got the first spring out, got the new uh, Terraflex Falcon bump stop in, and this is the spacer. See at the top there are a couple of nubs that actually go into locating holes in the top of the shock tower, and there are corresponding one uh, openings down below so that the OEM spring isolator actually fits right in and everything is properly located. So go ahead and get this up into place and then uh, so we can get that spring back in and uh, move on to the other side. Right, so that side's in. Let's see if we can get this side.
front lift blocks in place. Everything's put back together. The control arms are still loose. We do still have the drop brackets and uh, support brackets to do, but it says the, those are best done uh, with the vehicle loaded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, move on to the rear now. back together spacer blocks are in there new bump stops are installed everything's put back together uh, I do have to re-torque all the uh, control arm bolts but we need to do that under load so we'll get the wheels and tires on we'll get those torqued down and then we can move on to doing the uh, front control arm relocation brackets and uh, support brackets. So. Making some progress for sure. There are, are a few areas where there is some difficulties. I did find it on the rear easiest to disconnect the uh, parking brake cables so that I can get uh, some more droop out of the axle. Uh, definitely made it a lot easier. So uh, get this buttoned up and uh, move on to the brackets. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. We're gonna start here on the driver's side. These are the drop brackets. And then I've also got the drop bracket reinforcement plates to put on so we'll get started on that Got the drop brackets all installed. Everything tightened up. Uh, I do have to loosen up this bottom uh, lower control arm bolt again because I do have a bracket to put on. So this is a reinforcement bracket that will go up in here and attach to the lower control arm as well, and then to the frame where the uh, cross member is. So. We're gonna get started on that next. Uh, I do still have to tighten up all the suspension on the rear. Um, so we'll get this installed, get the rear tightened up, and then this uh, lift kit will be buttoned up and done. the sport bracket uh, support done so that is the front end all buttoned up just gonna tighten down everything on the rear and we're good to go all right so that definitely gave us more clearance Sitting just a little bit taller, a little bit prouder. Pretty happy with that. 
So definitely pretty happy with the way that the lift turned out. Uh, it's just a little bit. It's enough to get us a little bit more clearance. Uh, we didn't want to go super aggressive with it. The Rubicon 392 already sits higher than normal. Um, so just adding that extra inch and a half, two inch spacer uh, really make it a big difference here. So um, really looking forward to it. Now I just got to wait for the uh, vinyl uh, for the graphics to arrive and get the call that we can take it in. Uh, once we get that call, we'll get this thing in and uh, get the, the graphics done, start getting everything put back together. Of course, got to ceramic coat it. Um, I've also got new backup lights coming in because uh, I tried to install those and broke one. Um, so another video on those. So make sure you check that one out if you're doing the Oracle reverse lights on a JL on the factory steel bumper. Um, definitely made a mistake. So learn from mine. Don't make the same mistake and uh, save yourself the money. Um, so, but I do have another set of those coming in. Uh, they should be here later this week and uh, we'll get those installed when we can. So uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. Obviously, there's quite a bit more work to do on the 392 here. Uh, I've also got a bunch of work to do on the Gladiator, um, so we'll be seeing that here pretty soon. Uh, and then we've got another special uh, special buy here uh, that you haven't seen yet. So make sure you uh, like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you can see the, the new toy as soon as we reveal it. So thanks for tuning in.